Silicosis or Grinder's Disease Definition Silicosis is a chronic diffuse fibronodular interstitial lung disease caused by the inhalation of crystalline particles of silica or silicon dioxide, SiO2, or quartz. Properties of silica The particles must be of respirable size, 0.2 to 10 micrometers aerodynamic diameter, to reach the distal air spaces of the lung. Particles of 0.2 to 2 micrometers are the most dangerous. Silica occurs in both crystalline and amorphous forms, but crystalline forms, including quartz, cristobalite, and tridonite, are by far the most toxic and fibrogenic of these. Quartz is the most commonly implicated in silicosis. The biologic activity of silica is attributable to silanol groups and other chemically reactive species on the crystal surface, not to its physical shape or sharp edges. The mineral must be in crystalline form because glass, amorphous non-crystalline silica, is essentially non-toxic in crushed, powdered, or fibrous form. The mineral silica is abundant in nature as either pure quartz or mixed in igneous rock with other minerals. Whereas beach sand is pure quartz, granite contains 10-15% to crystalline free silica. When mixed with other minerals, the fibrogenic effect of quartz is reduced. This fortuitous situation is commonplace, as quartz in the workplace is rarely pure. Thus, for example, miners of the iron-containing ore hematite may have abundant quartz in their lungs, yet have relatively mild lung disease because of the protective effect of hematite. Exposure to respirable silica must be substantial and prolonged to cause clinically significant lung disease. Epidemiology It's the most common occupational disease in the world, and the sources of silicon dioxide include foundries, casting metal, sandblasting, and working in mines. Quartz, crystalline silicon dioxide, is most often implicated as a cause of silicosis. Pathogenesis Quartz is highly fibrogenic and primarily deposits in the upper lungs. Quartz activates and is cytolytic to alveolar macrophages. Activated macrophages release cytokines that stimulate fibrogenesis. Let us see a mechanism of how this happens. So silicon dioxide, silica, quartz particles, if there's a heavy exposure, say more than 30% silica content, and the exposure is for many months, it triggers acute silicosis, which triggers severe inflammation. An outpouring of alveolar surfactant lipids and proteinaceous debris occurs. This leads to dense eosinophilic material accumulating in the alveolar spaces and triggers silicoproteinosis. And that ultimately leads to diffuse lung fibrosis, reduced lung volume, and then respiratory failure. If there is a large exposure, and the exposure is for two to five years, condition called accelerated silicosis occurs. This is silicoproteinosis along with silicotic nodules. If there's a medium exposure, which is less than 30% silica content, along with long-term exposure, 10 to 20 years, can lead to chronic silicosis. This can be simple nodular silicosis or complicated conglomerate silicosis or progressive massive fibrosis of PMF. If there is long-term, over 10 to 20 years exposure and inhalation of silica particles, the, these particles interact with alveolar epithelial cells and alveolar macrophages. When they interact with alveolar epithelial cells, it causes direct injury followed by inflammation. When they interact with alveolar macrophages, there is ingestion of the silica particles. This triggers an activation of an inflammasome, and there is a release of inflammatory mediators by macrophages, IL-1, TNF, fibronectin, lipid mediators, oxygen-free radicals, and fibrogenic cytokines, and that triggers inflammation. In addition, after ingesting the silica particles, silicon hydroxide groups on the particle surface form hydrogen bonds with phospholipids and proteins of the macrophages. This leads to damage of the cellular membrane of the macrophage and ultimately to the death of the macrophage. Once the macrophage dies, it triggers a release of fibrogenic factors, which also triggers inflammation, and there's also a release of free silica, which again is re-ingested by the macrophages and also triggers inflammation. This inflammation ultimately leads to accumulation of macrophages, lymphocytes, and fibroblasts. There is a formation then of silicotic nodules, which are less than one centimeter in lung tissue and draining lymph nodes. This ultimately leads to simple nodular silicosis. These are whorls of type 1 collagen and other matrix proteins which then accumulate in the center of the silicotic nodules as it enlarges with an outer rim of mononuclear cells and proliferating fibroblasts. 
Silica particles within the nodules are seen as refractive, birefringent, needle-shaped silicates under polarized light microscopy. Ultimately, these nodules gradually coalesce and fibrotic process extends to infiltrate the surrounding tissue. There's a formation of a conglomerate mass with dense fibrosis. This complicated conglomerate silicosis or progressive massive fibrosis, PMF, ultimately leads to enlargement of the hyalur and mediastinal lymph nodes, peripheral calcification of the enlarged lymph nodes, which is called eggshell calcification. There is dystrophic calcification of the conglomerate mass, and then there is pleural thickening and nodularity. Morphology. Silicotic nodules in the early stages are tiny, barely palpable, discrete, pale to black, if coal dust is present, nodules in the upper zone of the lungs. Microscopically, the silicotic nodule demonstrates concentrically arranged, hyaluronized collagen fibers surrounding an amorphous center. The whorled appearance of the collagen fibers is quite distinctive for silicosis. Examination of the nodules by polarized microscopy reveals weakly birefringent refractile silica particles primarily in the center of the nodules. As the disease progresses, individual nodules may coalesce into hard collagenous scars with eventual progression to PMF, a progressive massive fibrosis. The intervening lung parenchyma may be compressed or overexpanded and a honeycomb pattern may develop. Fibrotic lesions also may occur in hilar lymph nodes and the pleura. Let us now look at the pathological types of silicosis. There are several types. Number one, simple nodular silicosis. Number two, progressive massive fibrosis. Number three, acute silicosis. Number four, accelerated silicosis. Number one, simple nodular silicosis has a pathology. It is a most common form of silicosis. It is almost inevitable in any worker with long-term exposure to silica. 20 to 40 years, but sometimes only 10 years after initial exposure of silica, the lungs contain silicotic nodules less than 1 cm in diameter, usually just 2 to 4 mm. Histologically, they have a characteristic whorled appearance with concentrically arranged collagen forming the largest part of the nodule. At the periphery are aggregates of mononuclear cells, mostly lymphocytes and fibroblasts. Polarized light reveals doubly reflectile, birefringent, needle-shaped silicates within the nodule. Hilar nodes may be enlarged and calcified, often at their edges, eggshell calcification. Simple silicosis does not usually impair respiration significantly. Radiographically, progressive massive fibrosis signifies nodular masses greater than 2 cm in diameter in a background of simple silicosis. These larger lesions, most of which are 5 to 10 cm across, represent coalescence of smaller nodules and are usually in the upper zones of the lungs bilaterally. The lesions often exhibit central cavitation. Progressive massive fibrosis is related to the amount of silica in the lung. Disability is caused by destruction of the lung tissue that was incorporated into the nodules. Acute silicosis. Now uncommon, acute silicosis results from heavy exposure to finely particulate silica during sandblasting or boiler scaling. It is associated with diffuse fibrosis of the lung. Silicotic nodules are not found. Dense, eosinophilic material accumulates in alveolar spaces to produce an appearance resembling alveolar lipoproteinosis or silicoproteinosis. It is due to outpouring of alveolar surfactant lipids and proteinaceous debris. The disease progresses rapidly over a few years, unlike other forms of silicosis, in which progression is measured in decades. On radiologic examination, acute silicosis shows diffuse linear fibrosis and reduced lung volume. Clinically, there is a very severe restrictive defect. It is usually fatal. Number four, accelerated silicosis. It develops within two to five years if the exposure is intense. Clinical features. Simple silicosis is usually a radiologic diagnosis without significant symptoms, that is, Silicosis usually is detected in asymptomatic workers on routine chest radiographs, which typically show a fine nodularity in the upper zones of the lungs. Most patients do not develop shortness of breath until late in the course after PMF is present. Patients with silicosis experience gradually progressive shortness of breath with exertion and cough, sometimes with clear or white sputum. Physical examination may be normal or high-pitched end inspiratory crackles or rails may be heard over the mid-lung areas. 
digital clubbing is very uncommon in silicosis. The disease is slowly progressive, often impairing pulmonary function to such a degree that physical activity is severely limited. Signs of core pulmonale, accentuated second heart sound, peripheral edema may be present and these are late manifestations of advanced disease as a result of chronic hypoxia-induced vasoconstriction and parenchymal destruction. In acute silicosis, dyspnea may become rapidly disabling after which respiratory failure ensues. Note, silicosis is associated with an increased susceptibility to tuberculosis. It is postulated that silicosis depresses cell-mediated immunity and crystalline silica may inhibit the ability of pulmonary macrophages to kill phagocytose mycobacteria. Nodules of silicotuberculosis often contain a central zone of caseation. The relationship between silica and lung cancer is unsettled, but most studies suggest that silica exposure is associated with some increase in risk. Diagnosis The radiographic features of silicosis may be much more striking than either the patient's complaints or the pulmonary function abnormalities. Chest X-ray findings include Acute exposure showing a ground glass appearance in all lung fields. Chronic exposure shows nodular opacities in the lungs. And the nodules show concentric layers of collagen with or without central cavitation with a mid or upper zone predominance. Egg shell calcifications are seen in the hilar lymph nodes. There's a rim of dystrophic calcification in the lymph nodes that simulates an egg shell. High resolution or thin section computed tomography, HRCT, is helpful in revealing this pattern and may show more extensive disease than would be suspected from the plain frontal chest radiograph. Pulmonary function tests show a pattern of mixed restrictive and obstructive physiology, commonly with oxygen desaturation with, with exertion. Note, in coal workers pneumoconiosis or CWP and silicosis, the upper zones of the lung are involved initially, while in asbestosis, the lower lung fields are involved initially. Complications of silicosis. Number one, core pulmonale, or Kaplan syndrome. Number two, increased risk for developing lung cancer and tuberculosis. Treatment. There is no effective treatment for silicosis. Silicosis can progress even after exposure ends. It must be prevented by industrial hygiene measures. Chronic silicosis must be managed with supportive care such as oxygen therapy and treatment of intercurrent infections. Kaplan nodules. When silicosis or coal workers pneumoconiosis occurs in a patient who also has rheumatoid arthritis, necrobiotic nodules or rheumatoid nodules may develop in the lung, a condition known as Kaplan syndrome. The lesions are typically large, more than one centimeter, round and well-defined. They are multiple, bilateral and peripheral. These Kaplan nodules often grow much more quickly than typical silicotic nodules and may undergo central necrosis or cavitation. They may also disappear spontaneously. The Kaplan nodules are of little clinical consequence in their own right, but may raise great concern about the possibility of tuberculosis caused by the cavitation or lung cancer resulting from their rapid growth. Section through the margin of Kaplan nodule show from inside to outside necrotic central area, separation clefts, zone of inflammatory cells and fibroblasts, and number four, rim of collagen.